Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode we begin at the tech tree because we got some science last time and I really 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 want RCS bipropellants. So I'm going to research that. We're going to have to wait until the R&D building upgrade before I can queue up lunar rated heat shields but we should aim to get more science from the moon in order to do that because we're just shy of the 60 that we need. And in order to do that, we are going to relaunch the last mission from last time, the new engine test. There'll be new engine test two, and this time with more of a focus on actually landing on the moon, which we do have a contract for, and getting some science from it. So I've removed some of the parts that are supposed to be for the sample return portion of the mission, which we'll just hold off on for now until we get better technology. Uh, I still think that we don't, strictly speaking, need the lunar rated heat shields if we have a low enough heat shield loading on the regular old heat shields, the Earth uh, LEO uh, rated heat shields. But uh, we might, we, we definitely don't want to test that theory with a crude capsule. Uh, with the sample return mission, we might. We'll see. But uh, for now, that RCS stuff is probably the most important thing. Ooh, propellants only docking ports. That's good too. Okay, so we've got that queued. This little engine could be really helpful too as uh, as an alternative to the um, AJ-10 because 287 vacuum is actually better than the AJ-10 has. Well, I say AJ-10, but it's really tiny. So actually it's pretty much useless as long as we have the RCS. Okay, forget about that engine. Well, I'm rolling out the new new engine test. But it looks like we have to pay attention to this Mars 1 mission first because it's entering Mars SOI. Though I don't expect that we actually have something to do with it before this launch. Though it's got to get a little bit complicated because I think we'll probably have to have that do some science when this is going to be trying to land on the moon. So it's got to be a bit of juggling, but we'll pay attention to that first, obviously, initially. So let's jump to it. Okay, we have entered Mars SOI with our first Mars probe. Uh, we appear to have communication, and it's a 10-minute delay. So, first of all, let's reorient this so that it's properly facing the sun. Now I'm going to have to wait 10 minutes after pressing R. Oh, come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right, delete that. Let's pay attention to the arms. All right, it's raising the periapsis a bit, but that probably doesn't matter. Um, we're not going to be able to fulfill the mission with this. Let's double check that. Yeah, it doesn't count as a new vessel, but we can still do sciences. So let's do the sciences. Uh, log pressure data, log temperature, visible imaging. Double check that visible imaging. I don't know if I clicked it properly. Record perturbation data. I forget if I action group this stuff. Mass spectrometry and log impacts. Okay, so pressure scan, transmit. Okay, mass spectrometry is only recovery. Gosh darn it. Micrometeorite detection, transmit, visible. Visible imaging is not very valuable. Orbital, orbital perturbation is good though, and that's biome specific. And yeah, maybe I should skip the mass spectrometry thing in future cases. That should be close enough. Let's face the sun again. We don't have much fuel left. High over Olympus Mons. Well, orbital perturbation experiments should be able to handle that. I wonder if the visible imaging can do it too. Cord perturbation, visible imaging, but that'll happen in 10 minutes, so I don't know if we're, we'll be high over Olympus Mons at that time. On the other hand, it is pretty big. Okay, orbital perturbation worked, visible imaging was new. Oh, geez. Uh, we are rolling out the new engine test. When is this going to arrive there? 17 hours. We'll follow this. Just, we can leave the rocket on the launch pad for 17 hours. We'll follow this through. It is just a little bit low on power out here. Highland data. 
confirmed. Okay, well, there's Mars. Our first approach. You know, right about now, I think I should queue things up so that they get the low over. Uh, we are 30 minutes from periapsis, though, but I think it might be low over by the time that 10 minutes are up. Or not. Uh, looks like I was early. Okay, well, now it's just above. I was, like, off by, like, a few seconds, darn it. I'll queue them up again here in the hope that it ends up being a different biome on the surface. And just before those experiments come in, I'm going to queue up another set. Not leaving a whole lot for my other missions to do, though, considering they're carrying the same instruments. Hopefully they can hit other biomes. Okay, oral perturbation, visible imaging, temperature. And it looks like these are not unique. Auto perturbation and the uh, visible can be surface bound dependent. Telemetry is also unique. That's good. Just waiting for it to send the pressure data. Lots of science now. Too bad there's no like world's first or anything. Above Olympus Mons. That's good. Olympus Mons seems to be all over the place. We've been over it all, you know, all along the way. Multiple times. Even though the time we took to get into low, Mar low over Mars was like a day, so it didn't do like a bunch of rotations or anything. Okay, I think it is done, basically. We missed the Highlands and Valus Marineris. Let's just make sure we regain communication and then we'll, there we go. We will switch to our lunar lander mission currently on the pad. Okay, so here we are ready to head for the moon and the rocket is substantially improved uh, in numerous ways. First of all, I realized that this tank actually has a functional core in it for 130 tons. So instead of having a core up here, we just have a structural component uh, to separate it from the fairings and again there's a weird configuration of the fairings. I took off the sample recovery apparatus on the probe and uh, put on a new scientific instrument that we had. So SAS on, throttle up, and H1 ignition. And launch. So once again, testing out our new engines and hoping that it goes a little bit better than last time, but who knows. As far as data units are concerned, we've got nearly 2,000 from the H1s so far, and the LR-105, of course, is an old motor that we've been using, and the 11D-33 is the one that I had the promise last time. That's got 2,700 units. We don't have much on the AJ-10, that's a little bit rocket has a lot of thrust to weight ratio but it's also really tall so have to be careful I think we have a much better mean time before failure now on the RD 58 the 11 D 33 engine than we did before I think before it was 900 seconds or 15 minutes now it's at 46 minutes so that that's definitely improved Okay, uh, we probably ought to flatten out. We're about to finish this stage up. There we go. And... Separation. And ignition. Okay. The LR-105 is proceeding. We can probably dump the fairings, maybe, hopefully, safely. Alright. And before I forget, let's activate these antennae. Since they need activation. 
Okay, separation. And... Ooh, that stuff. Ignition. Get away from it, get away from it. Alright, so... Proper ignition of the RD-58. Oh, and this time we have less hydrazine over here, and I configured the thrusters properly up here. So hopefully that will work out for us. Okay, we have shut down 167 by 187, and we can plot for the moon. We'll plot like this for now and then adjust. So, note in 54 minutes, um, electric charge wise, this isn't a very good orientation. Okay, setting the fuel down and ignition. Alright, it has started. We're a couple of seconds late, but it shouldn't be too bad. Okay. And separation. AJ-10 has ignited. So we got through the RD-58 successfully this time. Got some more data units. You know, maybe we should try to land at the poles. We have a lot of Delta V. We're not gonna get make orbit again. What if we decide to land at the pole instead of any normal location? Certainly we haven't done that before, so it'll be a new biome. Let's say we do a mid-course adjustment, if it'll let me. Doesn't seem like one pole is more likely to have sunlight than the other. This one isn't great, but I could see sort of capturing right there. We could just plop right down, but again, I don't know if we'll be over to pull properly. I think Megjeb is actually predicting our landing location on the moon, and it says lowlands. Let me see. If I lift that up, will it say poles? North Pole. Hmm. But that really looks like it's not going to be in communication. I think I better not do that because we need some more communication satellites to be able to do that. Let's see what else we could hit. Would it be right though? I mean, is it taking into account the rotation of the moon? I doubt it. North Pole it doesn't matter, but for these others, it might. Mare Imbrium. I don't think we've actually landed something there. I think we've gotten science from it. Well, it's putting the little X here, so maybe that means that it is taking the rotation of the moon into account. Okay, let's aim like that then. So we'll do that correction. Oh, I don't think we've done the radiometer out here. We just unlocked it. It's not worth that much though. Okay, we, we've done enough of the node, I think. Execute that instead. That says Mari Imbrium, so we'll see if it's right. We're just coming straight down and doing that sort of thing again. Now, one other improvement I made was to add more than one one kilonewton thruster there. So we have three now. So it's not going to be an 11 minute burn. It's just a four minute burn. So yeah, we can start out pretty close to the surface as far as the retro burn is concerned and the landing burn. So much better. Okay, let's go. One thing I like about the stock comm system is that it tells you how strong your communication is and how close you are to losing it kind of thing. So you could plan ahead maybe. Of course, not for not if something gets in the way of your line of sight, but still, it'd be an interesting extra piece of information here. Not that I want remote tech doing extra calculations, though. 
Still says Mari Imbrium. I don't know what my target is that has a target difference. And Mari Imbrium should definitely be facing the Earth. That's good too. Does it seem a little bit steep to you? It's probably all right. I suppose we can take a radiometer reading here too. We do have some instruments that we've never deployed, so we could do those to get more science if you want to. Only 3.4 for this one. Okay, six minutes. We can basically come to a halt, close to a halt, on the AJ-10 stage. We might need 30 seconds after that, but it's pretty close. So maybe time to land two minutes would be about right. And we're not going to be using these landing legs, probably for the best. Okay, doing science. Visible imaging is new. Orbital, orbital perturbation is new. And infrared radiometer. That's high over Mari Imbrium. Hmm, 240 kilometers is still high over, huh? Oh, the AJ-10 doesn't uh, do the whole icon color changing thing. That's annoying. It's very unstable, but it didn't say so. Uh, oh joy. I forgot uh, we don't have thrusters facing downward because sort of forgot about the whole ullage thing. Okay, there it is, very stable. Let's just ignite it. Probably a little bit early. Still high over. Well, ambient light is giving me a slight glimpse of the surface. Okay, well that's the end of the AJ-10. Right, separation. And we might as well have these upper thrusters active as well. Okay, so now it says suicide burn countdown two minutes. We will trust that. And we will do more signs because now we're just above Mari Imbrium. So yeah, three little one kilonewton thrusters like that. And our contract parameters just say land on the moon and transmit science. And we should have some nice fresh science to send up, send back, so good times. I feel like the instruments have it slightly imbalanced. You can see there's some pitch. No, I don't know. It could just be wiggling. Seriously though, when do we get the Lunar Gemini lander engine? Is it is it with that little can? The little light lander can? Or no? The Gemini light lander. That engine is nice because it has throttling. Which I could do right with right now. Instead of all this. No, don't go up. You don't go sideways either. Ah, don't bounce. Oh, bouncing is bad. Oh, okay, you're not quite upright. That's fine. That's fine. Just stop. 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 It worked for Luna 9. It's fine. Um, <laughs> transmit science. All right. It says we're landed. Okay, none of that. Yes. Did we break like a whole bunch of instruments? Because I'm sure we used to have a whole lot more. Yeah, what what happened to... Oh, I guess those don't work on the surface. Yeah, this one doesn't work on the surface. That's sad. Anyway, we fulfilled the contract. And it's sort of down here. I wonder if it can write itself. No, it can act like a... Mini rover, though. I don't think I'm going to get anywhere, though. It's probably going to just go in a circle. All right. So, no. We don't do that. And analyzed telemetry has been done. Hey, when I said do all the science, I, want, I meant do all the science. It only did three things. I thought I had action grouped analyzed telemetry as well. 
anyway, uh, job done. Uh, we got it over here. It's got 600 meters per second left. Uh, so obviously we would need a thousand more minimum to get into a rhythm, more like a thousand four hundred and then 800 more to get back home. Uh, so not so good so far as far as doing a sample return mission, but we're hoping some engine upgrades will help with that. Let's check out the tech tree again. I want to find out where the Gemini lander engine is. We've got so much science though. We've got science for days. Anyway, um, early landing. Well, there's the lightweight lander can and the lander legs, but it doesn't give us the engine to go with them. Oh, it's all the way out here. Well, what's the point of this uh, lightweight lander without its engine? The engine that was made for it, this one. That's peculiar. But okay, uh, we'll, we'll have to work with that. Hmm, and there's Lunar Module Ascent Engine. We'll be going up this line anyway, but we will need to upgrade the R&D building once again in order to get that though, because the current upgrade will only take us to 75 signs. Second gen capsules. Well, we better queue it up before I forget about it and spend stuff on other things. And I suppose it's more than time to start the RL10 line, though. It's like more expensive. No, it's about the same price as it used to be. It's relatively more expensive since some of the other engines are so cheap, like this LR87 thing. Okay, but let's start that stuff. Orbital rocketry. Hey, upgrades are upgrades. Let's queue that up. Better solar panels, also important. I think I'll go with that. This Mariner core is better than the early controllable core. And it leads to the Almighty Ranger Block 3 core, which then leads to the even mightier Surveyor core. I guess we'll go with that too. The one thing I, I want to save for the lunar rated heat shields and possibly this lunar landing one. Other than that, I'm not saving for anything. So we need 145. Yep, I think we will uh, proceed along the staged combustion line. They are useful engines. All right, so we've got all that queued up. R&D upgrade will come in 32 days. And the next upgrade, I don't know if it's another million or not. This one was the million that we see there. It's probably more expensive, so gotta keep that in mind. And I want to spend some more on R&D too. We're at point 0.9 now. And Mars flyby contract is the only thing that we need to fulfill. Lunar landing uncrewed again? It says you may complete this mission up to five times. I don't even know which number we're on at this point. Venus flyby. Now that's something. When is the next Venus window? 126 days. Well, okay. Well, I had it, had it on there already. Um, yeah, I think we should do that. Pick that up since it's two years. All right, we'll pelt Venus with as many probes as we pelted, pelted Mars. Okay, so I've got a couple of Venus ones queued up. We of course had the backup Mars one, and I guess it'll remain a backup as well. Uh, the Venus ones have extra instruments and also have an action group for those instruments, so I think they'll be probably a better bet. But first, I decided to put together a satellite using some of the instruments we haven't sent up because they're sort of bulky, and that is the Sierra Nevada one we have here, named because a name really after the Corona program, and. I'll leave to see, I'll let you guys figure out the joke there, the, or the reference, but uh, Sierra Nevada won, and we are going to send that over to the moon because we're curious whether there are aliens there, so we're going to send our big camera over there to check things out. So warp to complete. Okay, so here we are, and there is the improved film camera, which is our main instrument and the sort of purpose of this. You can see why it hasn't been added to any of the other missions previously. We have uh, avionics core here, and then I also unlocked the Agena D propellant tank, 
but it's filled with kerosene and oxygen because we are not using the Agena engine, we're using the RD58. We also have other instruments in here, which we will take a look at once we get to orbit. Uh, there are solar panels on the side, RCS thrusters, and there are hy hydrazine tanks inside the fairing as well. And the Delta V looks like this. We'll be close to orbit after the main stage, and then we'll finish orbit and then transfer to the moon using the RD-58. The question is, how much oxygen is going to be left once we get to the moon? In which case, can we make orbit or not? And if not, can we add enough MLI layers to this? Can we even add MLI layers to this? I don't know, I didn't check. Uh, in order to uh, prevent the boil off so that we could make orbit around the moon. Because it's important to get into polar orbit around the moon with this in order to accurately check whether there are aliens on the moon. So we want to keep a close eye on every single patch of the moon and that requires a polar orbit. So let's take a look at our lineup. We really don't have to line up perfectly with the moon, but just for flexibility's sake, and we do need the pumps on, we should get close. Okay, that'll do just fine. So here we are with Atlas again. Throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. These fairings are a slight variation on the fairings we have previously used on Atlas. It's the same fairing base, uh, they're just a little bit longer to accommodate the RD-58. So I did have to tool them, but it was very expensive. If this is successful, it should have enough Delta V to transfer to Mars or Venus as well. But those will have to be flybys. Uh, Making orbit will not be possible. It's possible to add a little package up there for a retro bird, but I think it'll make it too heavy for the Atlas in that case. Oh, I had meant to mention, and I think this is the first time we're flying Atlas, so I forgot. Um, apparently, these aren't for fuel feed lines, they're for other equipment. I don't know if they were originally meant for what, but. Um, Somebody suggested that. Hold on, we have to do booster separation. Okay, booster set. That did not work. Booster set. Okay, somebody suggested that they were different lengths because of the density of equipment in there. So this stuff is denser, so it's just smaller, and then there, these are a little bit less dense, so it has to be physically larger. And so aerodynamically, of course, the cross section is the same. As long as you keep the masses the same on either side, you're basically good to go. So maybe not the... well, it look, does not look from the schematic like it's uh, fuel lines, though. Sort of feel like that's wrong, but anyway, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay, good burn from the LR-105. And let's go flat here. And separation. RCS and ignition. Oh shucks. Oh, uh, does that mean it's totally not gonna work or? Okay, it's totally not gonna work. Well, that's sad. We had this nice satellite to send to the moon, but again, we're getting valuable data units on this. 51 minutes mean time before failure and somehow this is that time. All right, well, visible imaging we've done. Photography, that's that thing. Um, fine, we'll transmit. And let's get the antennae out just in case. And I guess we'll get radar, radar altimetry data now. Yeah, well, it looks like we can get science from it, but we haven't. Okay, and you didn't really extend the magnetometer. No, no info? Come on. I guess this is the wrong place for a magnetometer. Huh. Goo? 
well, this is not the place I wanted to do the goo. I only put the goo containers on to balance out the radar altimetry thing. How's the power situation while we time warp? Doesn't seem like it's enough. Where is the sun? Where is the sun? It's... okay, so... That's a bit more like it. Hmm. I don't... I thought this, uh, this was only a 30 watt unit. Yeah, and each of these panels is 30 watts. I guess the commutrons are consuming more than 30 watts? That's rough. Okay, well, we'll have to launch another one of these, if only to give this engine more of a workout in the future. And the magnetometer totally does not want to do anything. Maybe we had already done the magnetometer in low Earth orbit. I just didn't remember. No, pretend you were space plane. Ah. Maybe the RD-58 has really good heat tolerance? No, it doesn't look like it. This is pretty spectacular. There's practically like Skylab ripping apart. Okay. Well, I think I've had enough for this episode. <laughs> um, We'll, we'll try that again next time, and we'll try the other things. And uh, I really want to get to where we unlock further technologies, um, but it might be a while before I get my bipellant RCS, though. Anyway, so with this rapid disassembly, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.